Yeah, so thanks organizer for the invitation and give me a chance to give a talk here. And I especially want to thank organizers can reschedule my talk so many times. And it's for those people can cover my previous time slots. I didn't expect my flight, the two hour flight can actually took me two days to come here. <laughs> yeah, oh, so anyway, so I'll talk about packing topological miners half integrally. Okay, so let's consider two optimization problems. So one is called the packing problem, the other is called the covering problem. So we first fix a family of graphs F. The packing problem asks, if I have a graph G, how many sub disjoint subgraphs can I have such that each of them is isomorphic to a member of F? And the covering problem says that I have a graph G, then how many vertices do I need to touch all such subgraphs? So several problems in graph theory can be modeled into one of these forms. So for example, if I take F to be the set of graphs consisting of K2, then the packing problem just says, what's the maximum size of a matching? And the covering problem says, what's the minimum size of a vertex cover? Yeah, so in general, these two problems are integer programming problems. And uh, uh, the optimal value for these two problems can be arbitrarily large. But uh, at least we know the uptil value for the packing problem is at the most uptil value of the covering problems. Because if I have P disjoint subgraphs, then I need P vertices to touch them all. Um, yeah, but so we know the solution between these two problems, the gap be of the, so the gap of the optimal values of these two problems are arbitrarily large. But sometimes the solution for the covering problem can be upper bounded by the solution for the packing problem. So for example, if we go back to the matching the vertex cover case, we know the vertex cover numbers at the most twice of the maximum size of minimum size of matching because we just take the ends of the maximum matching, then it's the vertex cover. So this kind of situation is quite good because it means that if I can solve any of these problems efficiently, then I can get approximation of the other problem. So for example, finding vertex cover is the minimum size of vertex cover is hard, but finding a matching is easier. Yeah, so we, we are quite interested about when, can, when this situation happens. So like the, the, the value C can be rebounded by a function of P. So this stuff is exactly described by Elder's partial property. So formally, we say a family of graphs has the Elder's partial property. If for every number k, I can find a number n depending on k, such that for every graph G, either I have k disjoint subgraphs where each of them is amorphic to a member of F, or I can find a set of at the most n vertices touch all such subgraphs. So it just means that if the if the packing number is small, then I can cover them by using small number of vertices. So this property got its name because Erdos and Porsche prove that the set of cycles has Erdos and Porsche property. And this theorem was later generalized by Robertson and Simo in terms of graph minors. And I think I don't need to say what is a minor here. But if I have a graph H, let me write a set of graphs containing H as a minor as M of H. So what's their theorem? The theorem says that M of H has an Erdos Hochschild property if only if H is planar graph. So if I take H to be the loop, then M of H contains a set of cycles. So it, and then we know loop is a planar graph, obviously. So it just implies Erdos Hochschild theorem immediately. And this theorem is nice in other sense. It gives us a characterization for planar graph besides Trotsky's theorem. But then let's go back to the Toronto theorem. We know that the planarity is equivalent with the lack of the K5, K33 minor. It's equivalent with the lack of K5, K33 topological minor. So how about consider Erdos Hochschild property with respect to topological minor? So in particular, is it again equivalent with the planarity? So actually this is one of the problem asked by Robertson and Simo. They want to ask that for what kind of graph H can make the set of graphs containing H as a topological minor has Erdos Hochschild property. So to simplify the notation, let's just write the set of graphs containing H as a topological minor as T of H. So you want to characterize the graph H such that T of H having the Erdos Hochschild property. Well, actually the answer is quite complicated. Even for some tree H, T of H cannot have the Erdos Hochschild property. 
So here is an example. I pick this graph edge here. So this is a tree. Now I want to construct, so for every number k, I want to construct a graph that does not contain two disjoint edge topological minors. And I cannot hit all edge topological minors by using k vertices. So here's the construction. So pick a wall of large size, the size depending on k. And then we delete the top vertex of edge. I get three disjoint subtrees. Then I just make several copies of these trees and then attach them at the bottom of the wall in this way. So the copy of the first subtree attached at the left hand side, the copy of the second subtree attached in the middle, and the copy of the third subtree attached at the right hand side. Then it's easy to see that there's an edge topological minor. But we cannot find two, edge, two disjoint edge topological minors. And if you want to hit all edge topological minors, then essentially we need to hit all rules of the grid or sorry, all rows of the wall or all columns of the wall. We cannot do it by using at the most k vertices. So this construction just shows that T of this tree cannot have the error to property. And actually, the complete characterization for the graph edge have, making T of edge having error to property is solved in a joint work with Luke Postle and Paul Wallen. So, I mean, our characterization is quite complicated. But let me roughly say what it means. So it just says that if I have a graph edge such that T of edge has an error property, then if only if edge should satisfy a topological condition and the covering condition and the symmetric condition. So it's quite complicated. So I don't want to stay exactly what they are. But by using this construction, we also show that it's unlikely that there's a simple characterization. Because we also proved that if I have a given graph edge, deciding whether T of edge has an Erdosha property is an NP hard problem. So if I have a simple characterization, then it's likely that we can solve this NP hard problem in polynomial time, but it's unexpected. Yeah, okay, so this theorem just tells us that the Erdosha property with respect to topological minor behave not nicely. So what else can we do? Is there a way to modify the condition in the Peking problem to make the Erdosha property nicely. So let's go back to the Peking problem. What does it say? It says that we want to find several disjoint subgraphs. In other words, I want to find a bunch of subgraphs such that for every vertex of the host graph G, it's containing at the most one of those subgraphs I find. So how about say, okay, so now I allow every vertex of the host graph G is contained at the most two of the subgraphs I found. And then if we do this way, then let's go back to this example. So this example G, the graph G here, shows that I need a lot of vertices to cover all edge torsional minors. But we can find a lot of edge torsional minors such that every vertex in the graph is contained at the most two of edge torsional minors. So here, the, each the red curve and the blue curve give us edge torsional minors. Yeah, so let's do this formally. So let's say a graph G have, in, have integrally packed K graphs means that I can find K subgraphs such that each of them is isomorphic to a graph I like. And every vertex in the graph G is contained at most two of them. So actually this relaxation, so let's go back to the original packing problem. We can formulate it as an integer programming problem. And how about half integral packing? It's exactly the relaxation of the integer programming problem, but now we allow the solution to have denominator two. So it's something between the integer program and the linear program. And let's consider a social property with respect to this half integral packing. So we said a family F has the half integral Erdor Hosha property. If for every number k, I can find the number n such that for every graph, either it half integrally packs k subgraphs where each of them is isomorphic to a member of F, or I can find at the most n vertices touch all such subgraphs. And actually, there's a conjecture by Robin Thomas stating that for every graph edge, 
the set of graphs containing H as a minor has the half integral area of the Hirschel property. So it says that if we consider half integral, half integral packing, then we don't need planarity. And this conjecture was first solved by Korobayashi for the case that H is K5 or K6. And then Sergei Norin completely solved this conjecture, but they didn't write down the proof. Yeah. So the main theory of this talk is that we can further generalize this theorem about for topological minors. So in other words, for every graph H, the set of graphs containing H as a topological minor has the half integral area of the Hirschel property. Yeah, actually, why we prove is even stronger. We can prove a rooted version of this theorem. So what do I mean a rooted version? So first, for every vertex of the graph H, I associate it with a subset of vertices of G. Let's say the set is R V. Then we say a subdivision H of H in the graph G is R rooted, meaning it's a subdivision of H. And the, the branch vertex corresponding to vertex V is containing R V. So if I take R V to be the set of vertices of G, then the R rooted subdivision of H just a subdivision of H. Okay, so our rooted version theorem says that for every graph H, we can find a function F such that for every graph G, for every possible collection of roots and for every positive integers, either we can find K, we, either the graph G have integrally pack K R rooted subdivisions of H, or we can hit all R rooted subdivisions of H by using at the most F of K vertices. Yeah, so I'm not going to prove this theorem. The proof of theorem uses almost the entire power of the graph minor series. But let me just do some easy application of this main theorem. So we only, so let's restrict ourselves to the non-rooted version. It's easy to state and it's useful. So the first application is to prove Thomas conjecture and the Sergey Norin theorem. So. Now assume that T of H has the Erdos Hochschild, half integral Erdos Hochschild property. Then we want to prove M of H has the half integral Erdos Hochschild property. So how can we do that? So fix the graph H. Then let's consider all subcubic graphs that can append it from H by splitting a vertex degree list of four. So we get a finite family of subcubic graphs, which has the property that if I have a graph G containing H as a minor, then this graph must contain some member of this special family as a topological minor. And then for each such spatial subcubic graph, we use our structures, uh, use the half integral area of the property theorem. We know that if my graph G can half integral pack K these spatial subcubic graphs, then I also pack K H minors, so it's impossible. So for each such spatial subcubic graphs, I can find a set of bounded sides to hit all such subdivisions. And then I just take the union of all sets among the, small, uh, the spatial subcubic graphs, I still get a finite set. And the least finite set is a hitting set for all H minors. So it's, a, it's just proof Thomas conjecture. Yeah, uh, so let me show you another application. So another general scheme for applying the Erdos Hoxha type theorem is that. So if I have a graph that does not have integrally packed two special graphs I like, and then I can delete the bounding number vertices to kill all these special kind of graphs. So this gives us an application for a structure theorem excluding something. So in particular, here's a structure, structure theorem for excluding a fixed graph as a topological minor. There are several versions of that. So let me mention one version proved by Zendenek de Vorschark. So it proves that if I have a graph H, every graph G that does not contain H as a topological minor has a nice tree decomposition in the sense that every total of this tree decomposition either has a bounding number of vertices of large degree, or it can be nearly drawn in a surface in which H cannot be drawn, or it can be drawn in a surface, nearly drawn in a surface in which H can be drawn, 
but the embedding is nicer than every possible embedding of edge. So this theory is quite nice because it says that if I screw the edge as a topological minor, then either I more or less bound the maxima degree, or I can make genus smaller. Or genus is not smaller, but the embedding could be nicer. So that's good. And if we use our elder Tosha theorem, then we can generalize the, the class of grass to be the grass that does not have integrally packs a fixed number of edge topological minors. So how, can, how does it work? So pick a graph G that does not have integrally pack K subdivisions of edge. Then we can find a bound, we can delete the bounding number vertices to make the graph edge topological minor free. Then we use structure theorem of divorce shock. We can have a nice tree, a nice tree decomposition. And then we just put the old deleted vertices into all backs. Then the, the conclusion still holds because there are several constant hidden, hidden here. Yeah, so it's an easy application of the editor Porsche type theorem. Yeah, okay, so there's one version of the structural theorem for excluding an edge subdivision. And as I mentioned earlier, the theory is good in the sense that the second conclusion or a third conclusion involving with the parameters of edge, the second one involving with the genus of edge, the third one is not about genus of edge, but it's about the embedding of edge. So the drawback of this theorem is the first one. We don't really know what's the bound of the maxima degree. That's not good. So, and the later, Robin Thomas and I have the kind of generalization of the, of the theorem. We can, we can improve the bound of the maxima degree into the maxima degree of H minus one, which is possible. But I'm cheating here because now I don't really have a tree decomposition. I only have a tangle. So it's a local type of tree decomposition. Yeah, but it allows us to make the first statement involving with the parameter of edge. So now the theorem really says that if I exclude the edge as a topological minor, then some parameter of the graph G can really be smaller than the corresponding parameter of edge in some sense. And this improvement is important for our proof of the Robertson's conjecture on well quasi ordering. And also used in, the, in our uh, editor's Hochschild's theorem for topological minor, not having integral version, the integral version. Yeah, but, and then we can use the half integral version of the editor's Hochschild type theorem to generalize the theorem to graph that does not have integrally pack K subdivisions of H. Okay, so that's one application. And let me mention another one. It's about approximation algorithm. So it's about apex minor free graphs. So what's an apex minor? Uh, sorry, what's an apex graph? It's a graph that I can delete one vertex to make a graph planner. It's an apex graph. And in the earlier work of Demand and Hijra Hai, they provide a polynomial time approximation scheme for graphs that does not contain and fixed, graph, fixed apex graph as a minor for all general hereditary maximization problems. So what is this? It's a maximization problem of some graph parameter. And this parameter has a property that if I delete one vertex, then the parameter does not increase. So for example, the maxima size of stable set is such an example. If I delete one vertex from a graph, the maxima stable set size doesn't increase. Yeah, so they prove that for every apex graph H, and for every uh, approximation ratio, I can find a polynomial time algorithm to approximate it within this ratio, assuming the, the ratio is constant for all apex minor free graph. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's true for all generally hidden maximization problems. Yeah, and then if you use our Erdor Porsche type theorem, then it's easy to generalize the theorem to graphs that does not have integrally packed too many apex minors. And so there's another application of the Erdor Porsche type theorem. Yeah, and uh, I think it's about the time. Yeah, thank you.
Yeah, I think I think I start five minutes already. So, it's very honest of you. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Can you say something about the victory immersion? Uh, I think. So now you cover the weak immersion by using edges instead of vertices. Yes. Like, uh, yeah, and then I think the half integral thing still holds. I mean, you just go through all the, the, the proof of my theorem and the repress all vertices by edges. But I mean, you need to default some tools in graph minus series with respect to edges. And then I think everything should work. So does your characterization at least give some algorithm to test? Yeah, it's a pi 2p algorithm. Okay. Uh, what that is? Pi 2p, I mean, it's the hierarchy higher than np. Assuming np problem can be solved in polynomial time, then this problem can be solved in co-np time, in, in, in sense. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs>